So after getting to know Martin, we were immediately keen to find out, and uh, basically one of our biggest questions was what was his story? Um, and uh, what he said or what follows was um, absolutely uh, inspirational. Okay, and then the next one, quite big. Um, so tell me about your story. Okay, so travel-wise, um, I guess it, my story starts with my parents, really. Um, when I was a kid, I wasn't so much making the, the decisions of if we would go away and where we would go. Um, but my mum and dad, well, we often went for a, a sort of trip, whether it be in England, somewhere like Bournemouth or Norfolk, to go to the, the beach. And so I've always been forevermore quite drawn to um, the seaside and that whole chilled out vibe that you get on the coast. Um, and then as time went on, um, I started to feel like, you know, when I got to university and I started to get more independence of having carers because I have a full time um, support from carers because of my disability. That yeah, it'd be great to to travel a bit more and not rely on uh, mum and dad sort of where we're going to go and their input. Very much like someone without a disability, really. But when I travel, there's quite a lot more I have to consider. Um, so I think I might have had one or two little trips with carers but the the big um sort of groundbreaking trip for me that really defines my absolute outbreak of world travel afterwards was um, when i was at uni to go to australia it was my big challenge basically it was the other side of the world it was going to be an adventure it was going to be difficult so i had to arrange uh, two carers because one wouldn't be able to Cope, sort of working the whole three weeks or three and a half weeks that I'd be away. Um, I had to arrange all the wheelchair accessible transport. Um, I have a thing called a hoist that lifts me and out of my wheelchair. So a person doesn't have to actually lift me, but almost like a crane, if you imagine like a crane, that's, that, that lifts me out of the wheelchair. And so at home um, and, and even in England, I know where to get that stuff. But in Australia, obviously, I had no clue. Um, so that was like a massive research and planning element of, of that trip. But yeah, it, it was a fantastic trip down under. And I did all the things I'd ever dreamt of in Sydney, Melbourne and Noosa, which is this like cool surfing town near Brisbane. Um, and then, yeah, really since then, I've, I've just been all over the place. I've done America, Mexico. I say America, like USA, uh, Mexico, Japan, Singapore, um, and all around Europe quite a few times, and Egypt, which meant it was the sixth of uh, was it six of the seven continents, or it depends what you class as a continent. But apart from the North and the South Pole, I've done all the continents now. Fantastic. So it was, it's basically been one sort of big adventure. Would you say that? Um, over time it got easier to travel sort of being in a wheelchair did you find it easier did you find um, certain countries were was there certain countries that were easier um, as I've ended up traveling more and more um, starting with a passion for travel but my other passion is around inclusion and equal rights for disabled people obviously shaped by my experience but um, I run a magazine and various other projects that is for the whole community of disabled people. And that that sort of intertwined with my travel. So um, through my blog, I started to get invited to places that had done a lot of work on being accessible. And they wanted me to come um, almost journalistically. And the modern world is very much about blogging and influencing. To, to just write up my experience of their tourist destination. Um, mm -hmm. And so in the end, I've done projects with the Japanese government, the Catalan Tourist Board, a lot of other parts of Spain, actually. Um, through that, I've probably been invited to places that are doing good stuff because that's why they engage me. But then I've also gone on general trips myself and found that, yeah, there are places that are not so geared up and when I'm now giving quite a lot of um, talks and speeches people often say that you know when you look at the whole world where is good or less good for disabled people and my answer is generally that it relates to the economic 
ability of a country, there is definitely a trend that when you go to more Western countries or Westernized countries, there is a lot more infrastructure with the transport, with the, the buildings and the accommodation, with the, the sort of equipment that I mentioned being for hire. Um, so there's, there's definitely far better access in the, the more developed countries. But I also say that when I've been to places where they haven't maybe got some of that, they've definitely got this very helping can-do attitude and people will just muddle in and they'll help lift the wheelchair or they'll lift me out the wheelchair and all that kind of stuff. So it's always it's something for something, you know, it's not one size fits all, but it, in the end it it shows the different cultures and the different ways of the world, both how they are with disability, but then just generally to try out their foods and get to know their language and their culture is is such an amazing learning experience. Oh, amazing. That's great. I sort of always expected, the, the, obviously, you, you know, you'd expect that a, a better economy would offer better services, better service would offer better accessibility. But it's funny how actually just the, we've done that so that the, the pressure isn't on people, um, which seems almost a bit of a shame, actually, because it's that, it's that sense of community, that sense of just pulling together and um, embracing tourism has allowed you to probably meet more people in the less westernized countries because they've come to help and, and all sort of mucked in, which is um, quite nice, really. Yeah, and I think, you know, that obviously when I've been to the more developed countries, there's still, they've still met people and they've still been good people and it's all been a positive experience too. Um, the difference is they've just not had to muck in with the, the elements of my inclusion and accessibility. And I suppose if I'm honest, I'd rather have the access and meet people because I'm sociable and I love to chat to everybody and, and have that cultural experience. But it, it, it's sort of with the, the less developed worlds, they also prefer to have ramps and all this kind of stuff, but they, they understand they've not got the means. And so, yeah, absolutely, like you say, they make up for it with the way that they just be hospitable and friendly. Mm, fantastic. Okay, perfect. That's, that's honestly, that's, we kind of asked for a better answer to that. Mm. 